and then we'll take it forward. And now, when the moment Himanshu confirms it is live, we'll start the session immediately. Yes, Sandeep, uh, we are live now. Uh... Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the uh, interesting webinar on Green Resorts and Hotel, which is organized with, uh, by uh, IGBC and as well as Hotels and Resorts Association of Western Region. Uh, this particular uh, webinar is not just a concept-oriented uh, uh, session. It is also uh, coupled with a lot of interesting case studies where uh, the concepts which have been discussed will also be uh, looked at how it has been implemented and also the benefits and that a uh, developer or a uh, or an occupant who is visiting the resort or hotel could also be uh, uh, benefited. Now, uh, without any delay further, uh, let let us welcome um, uh, Mr. Bharat Kamath uh, to uh, give the welcome address. Um, Mr. Bharat Kamath um, is the chairman for IGBC Goa chapter and also the managing director for Kamath Infratech Private Limited. He's a bachelor, uh, uh, having, having a bachelor degree in uh, civil engineering and, uh, and he's a chartered engineer from India. And uh, he's a government of India approved valuer and a fellow member of the institution of valuers in India. He's, uh, and uh, he's a partner in Kamath Infotech uh, Private Limited, uh, which provides uh, professional consulting services right from planning, designing, and also to execution of not only industrial, commercial, but also for the residential projects. And uh, they also provide uh, the green building certifications uh, for the projects. And uh, Mr. Bharat uh, is also a, a past president of two Rotary Clubs, uh, the Rotary Club of Vasco da Gama and also the Rotary Club of District 9890. Uh, welcome, sir. Uh, I request Mr. Bharat Kama to uh, welcome all the participants. Uh, request you to unmute, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. We have today with us Mr. Mahesh Patil, who is the chairman of the Goa State Pollution Control Board, Mr. Samir Sina, who is the chairman of the IGBC Ahmedabad chapter and the managing director of Kensville Golf Club Resort and Savvy Group, Mr. Burhanuddin Sayyad, who is the corporate chief engineer of Mahindra Holidays and Resorts, Mr. Sandeep Kalawalikar, who is the committee member of Hotel and Restaurant Association, Western India, and also the Managing Director of Jackson Hospitality, Mr. Praveen Kumar Soma, Senior Counselor of CII IGBC, and Mr. Kula Shekhar, who is the Co-Chair of IGBC Goa Chapter. And ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon to you. On behalf of the IGBC Goa Chapter and the Hotel and Restaurant Association of Western India, it's my pleasure to welcome you all to the webinar on Goa Green Resorts and Hotels. IGBC was formed in the year 2001 and was the first green building chapter in India. IGBC started the, the green building movement in India started with IGBC and the IGBC headquarters at Hyderabad was the first green rated platinum building in India. Since then, the green building movement has grown at a rapid pace in, pace in India and today India stands as the second country in the world with the largest green building footprint. This is something all of us have to be proud of. Today, India has crossed the 8 billion square foot green building footprint, and we are going, we are heading fast towards 10 billion square foot, which we hope to achieve by 2022 end. In fact, we thought COVID would halt the march, but COVID has not uh, affected the green building, expansion of the green building footprint across India. IGBC has not only one, but 30 different unique green building rating systems for different projects and different building typologies, which can be used all over, all across India, whether you are in the West zone, North zone, East zone or South zone. One of the very important factors today is the move towards net zero. Our prime minister has also set net zero goals, which has been accepted internationally. And IGBC is also in the forefront we have launched the IG net zero energy net zero energy rating system, the net zero water water rating system, and now we are also going to shortly launch the net zero carbon rating system for different ratings across the net zero segment. 
A lot of people say, what happens when we rate a building green? Well, once IGBC completes, once the building's 8 billion square foot footprint rated under IGBC are complete, some of the tangible benefits that will be seen are, say, energy savings of 103 billion units per annum, which is equivalent to providing electricity to the entire rural population of India of 900 million. Water savings of 318 billion liters per annum, which is equivalent to Hyderabad's water demand for one year. And most importantly, the reduction in the CO2 emissions of 85 billion tons, which is equivalent to keeping 96 million cars off the road for a year. Now coming to the IGBC Green Resorts Rating System. Sustainable tourism is not a choice anymore, but a necessity. Today, customers or hotel guests are looking forward to coming to green resorts because that is where they feel they can contribute to social green practices, social practices and be a part of the movement towards green. A green resort not only offers opportunities, better, opportuni be better amenities to the guests, but is also environmentally friendly and reduces the negative impacts on the environment. This rating is one of its kind in India and also all over the world. The IGBC Green Resorts Framework enables the resort owners and facility, facilities team to implement green measures, reducing the resource consumption and hence the operating cost. In fact, the bottom line of any resort will go up once it adopts a green resort rating system. This in turn enhances the profitability of the resorts. The key benefits of a green resort would be attracting eco-friendly, uh, eco-conscious eco travelers, promoting local jobs, local culture, local art. On the operation side, you will see 20 to 30 percent energy savings and about 40 percent water savings. Another advantage is reduction in greenhouse gases, enhanced biodiversity and once you get rated as a green resort, that is when you turn to turn out as a role model in hospitality. I would like to thank all the participants for the enthusiasm and proactive participation. I'm sure you will have a very useful and productive session. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bharat Kamal, for uh, setting the tone for the program. I now, um, a small announcement for all the participants. Uh, all the participants, at any point of time, you have any query, please do post your questions in the Q and A section. And at the end of the program, we have a, a 15, 20 minutes uh, discussion on the on your queries. Now, uh, important part of uh, part of our session is um, the uh, we have the address from uh, Mr. Mahesh Patil. Mr. Mr. Patil was a uh, was an um, a senior management position in multinational resource company with 25 years of experience with diverse management and geographies. He is selected for a LEAD program uh, by Rockefeller, uh, Rockefeller Foundation USA. This program is connected in 18 countries. Now a LEAD fellow and is serving as board of director on LEAD India. Mr. Patel uh, received uh, a citation from uh, Federation of Indian Mineral Industries, New Delhi in 1993 and 1999 for his role in outstanding contribution to the national goal of sustainable development and through environmental conservation and rational utilization of natural resources. It was a part of the environmental award of, to the company. It's also a part of the MOEF team of SAR countries to develop uh, environmental impact uh, assessment guidelines for natural resources sector in SAR. Uh, the program was organized by the International Union for Conservation. Uh, welcome, sir, uh, to the webinar and uh, request you take over. Thank you. Good afternoon. Mr. Bharat Kamar, Chair IGBC, Mr. Samir Sina, Mr. KK Shekhar, Mr. Burhan Muddin, Pravin Soma, and all other participants. Thank you for inviting me for this webinar on green resorts and hotels. I congratulate and appreciate the efforts of CII IGBC for this initiative of green resorts and hotels. Uh, incidentally, I was I had participated a couple of programs of uh, CII IGBC at Hyderabad. 
So I'm well aware of the building and the initiative which you have taken a long ago. Uh, for us, green is not just a color or not the trees, as we all know. And Mr. Bharat Kamath has aptly described what are the various initiatives which comes to the green. We know R, we say reuse, reduce, recycle, to many other connotations. And I do not want to dwell upon it. Here, probably my role as I am newly, as a regulator, I was the other, other side of the panel, other side of the table as an industrial operator. So I, well, I'm aware of what is happening, but let me look at with that all experience or the in, interaction I had earlier in my role as an industry. And today I'm looking at the regulator. And but for us, it's a more of a, in a mindset or the approach. And I think that is more important. Uh, the concepts are there, but how would you implement it and how we would change a thinking process to implement these initiatives into a practice and that only industrialists can do uh, not uh, not at the private and probably i more so in this resorts and hotels which can play a very very significant role because you not only create a ledger or a pleasure for the people but you generate a lot of revenue and employment and while doing so the people and I personally feel you can create a good educator or a knowledge disseminator. Because often, like uh, I can cite the one earliest uh, green uh, resort hotel, which I probably I went in 1996, is a Orchid Hotel in Mumbai. And to be very fact, I went to see there how they were using a biocomposter importer from Australia to treat their organic waste, which I implemented in my company, the Tag G Investor. And that was, I think, in those days, Orchid was considered to be one of the green hotel, uh, five-star hotel next to the now present domestic airport in Mumbai. So the issue is uh, one hotel started a trend and other followed. But however, as we and today, the recycle, reduce, and as a regulator, we write in our own consent, you must use your brick, flyers, brick, that become a norm. But however, how best, I think, that anyway industry will do and you find a lot of economics into it and as Bharat has rightly said it makes uh, economic sense probably 15 20 years back somebody was talking of this green initiative said it only entails cost and no benefit but today consumers are well aware people choose if there's a price being the same or maybe slightly 10 percent up i think uh, today your customers are very conscious of environment especially new children children what i find in fact, my children, when they're booking hotels, they would look at that green more important than the other luxury. And I think probably all eminent speakers and the owner of the hotels are aware. So I think that is that is one thing which we can think. And what I felt is the many of the good case studies which I'm going to present, my suggestion would be you can create a sort of a small exhibition hall. And there you can display what are the green initiative you have put up. Probably you have put a good biodigester or you are recycling water techniques. And that becomes a one, because in hotels, we have a huge land, we display our garden, we display our park, but that will become a, you become an educator, you become a knowledge disseminator. And that becomes a, one of the activity, if you nicely uh, displayed. And I don't want to tell hotel industry veterans how best you can display. And that could also become a sort of an attraction point. So my saying is, this can add more value, not only to you, but the client we are visiting and ultimately you are disseminating the knowledge. The client can go back, they can put this facility in their own buildings, maybe their colonies, and they can also tell others. So that is a direct, that would be my suggestion uh, as a policy maker or implementer and to, to do, do this display room. Uh, then one of the what I've said was, uh, what I felt was, while designing a building, probably most of the times, and it's rightly so, we always look at the FSI, how much maximum FSI we can have. So we are the best utilization FSI. I think instead of best utilization FSI, I need to look how we can use best use of the natural resources. I can share a small example because last two years I've been member of the CRZ Committee of Goa. I travel from north to south of Goa, coastal belt. And I saw a few hotels, which I can even take the name. You must have, few of you must have seen elsewhere Goa. 
the Elsevier Goa, you can Google it uh, for, from other part. They demand a premium. I don't, he has not used, utilized even a 5% or FSR. So typically when people used to come to me as a, I was expert member, I said, please don't look at the FSI, preserve your sand dune and make that as an example that uh, you, you have a sand dune tourism. You have a turtle tourism. So then local ecology, please first start the moment you design a project, plant from coconut, which are very common to our coastal band. There's which you shade, gives you a look and a global look. But unfortunately, some of, uh, we, quite sometimes we get more on a FSI business and look to the longer sites. So my uh, request would be to look into this aspect, which is a normal business as a uh, waste utilization, solar energy, zero discharge, he said net zero, all that anyway will do it. But now stage has come, especially going beyond. Maybe it's a coastal area or maybe in the hinterland. Now this hinterland is also becoming a major tourist attraction. But we should be conscious of the local culture, local history and local population requirement. And we have to design hotel or make a practices in consensus or conscience with the local setting, what I call environmental setting. Uh, I wouldn't take you more time, but that was my thought process. Like we can really, and then we'll be very happy to join hands with I, IGBC in Hyderabad or Goa chapter, in whatever way to disseminate this knowledge, that is one. Number one, uh, secondly, what I observed here, because most of, many of our from construction industry, and I find you generate a lot of water. One is recycling, but I think you have 30, 40% water from any building, you don't know how to dispose. And then I've, I've seen uh, experience of last one month, that, that water balance doesn't happen. And water is a limiting resource. So how best we can use this water, not within your building, outside. Uh, I don't know, I don't have really made answer. I got a couple of ideas, which we can discuss separately, maybe Goa, Creda or Goa Construction uh, Association, because I, my limited role is in Goa, and we can take it forward. But I think that is something which we need to really think of. Uh, thank you once again. Uh, for giving me this opportunity to share my thoughts uh, and I appreciate the efforts which IGBC has taken over, uh, uh, taken, initiated and whatever support you want, we are there. Also, I would be happy because we are my Goa Chief Pollution Control Board building is designed on the green sort of a concept by a very famous architect, Gerard Kuna. Probably we could take forward, I really don't know if there are any certified Green building is in Goa. Bharat will be able to tell me or tell us. Uh, if not, then we can initiate. We can take initiative, and any support required, we can take apart from our building here. Uh, I wish uh, all the success for this webinar, and I'm sure the experience and the speakers who are lined up now with their case studies will get a lot of information and insight for all the participants. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir, and uh, thanks for uh, uh, highlighting the importance of uh, going sustainable uh, way and also underlining the green uh, makes business sense. Uh, sir, I'm uh, with uh, with the permission of Mr. Bharat Kamath, we would uh, also uh, do a free feasibility study for uh, the project what you mentioned, and we will take uh, definitely the uh, the building uh, uh, into the next level of green level, sir. Thank you so much, and we have noted all the valuable information and inputs, sir. We will also uh, try to uh, put forward to all the participants also. Now, uh, going to the next session, um, we uh, we have uh, an interesting case study on uh, uh, Kensville Resort, uh, which is an IGBC Platinum Certified Green Resort. Uh, we have with us Mr. Samir Sinha, uh, who is the uh, chairman for IGBC Ahmedabad uh, chapter, and also the managing director for Kensville Resort. He holds an engineering degree from LD College of Engineering and has completed his MS in Civil Engineering from uh, uh, Purdue University, uh, USA. He worked on several multi-million dollar infrastructure projects in Chicago before establishing savvy infrastructures along with, along with his two colleague uh, classmates in February 1996. Today, savvy has established a formidable uh, reputation in the real estate arena in Gujarat. It is known for its high-end commercial and residential development. Savvy has built projects worth nearly 1,000 crores, including 20 lakh square feet of residential and commercial development, and also 
750 acres of Gulf uh, Township since 1996. He is a chairman of IGBC Ahmedabad chapter and member of the National Executive Committee of IGBC. He is driving the green move, building movement in the city with great passion to restore the health of our ailing mother earth. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Sandeep. Uh, can I share my screen? Um, so, such a pleasure. Uh, thank you so much uh, for organizing this. My special thanks to uh, IGBC uh, Goa Chapter Chair, uh, my friend Bharat Kamath, and the co-chair, uh, Sri K.K. Shekhar. Uh, such a pleasure, sir, to be in your company, Mr. Mahesh Patel, Chairman, Goa GPCB, and my friend uh, Sandeep uh, and Praveen. Um, thank you so much. I will get into my uh, presentation immediately so that uh, we uh, don't waste too much time. Uh, what I want to do today is to talk about my uh, actually put the uh, walk the talk and, and kind of display what we have been able to achieve uh, in my project, uh, Kensville Golf and Country Club. And like I said, I wear a double hat today as a, a promoter of the golf course and the country club, as well as the chair of Ahmedabad uh, Green Building Chapter of Ahmedabad Green Building Council. Uh, this project is very dear to our heart. It is one of our flagship projects in, in the Savi Group. And we started this uh, almost uh, 20 years ago. Uh, the project is spread over uh, 900 acres, uh, and it is one of the largest uh, real estate developments in the state uh, in, with, with the scale of uh, the size that we have. And almost 70%, 50% still remains undeveloped, which we hope to do over the next uh, uh, five to 10 years. Uh, before I get into the details of what we have done, uh, I want to reiterate what uh, 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 Bharat said in the beginning, is that this is not an exercise in cost, what is the additional cost of doing this. It is uh, probably an exercise in realizing what is the benefit of doing green, and is there a benefit? And I can vouch for it that we are, uh, uh, we would have been uh, effectively non-productive if we had not gone green. And from the very beginning, when we started deciding to design this project, we were committed to going green and sustainable. And this is what we have achieved. We have 22% uh, savings in energy, 100% waste on the site is, is recycled and managed at, at the site. There's zero waste that goes out of the site. Uh, there is a 30% water saving, including the consumption of the water in the golf course and the housing. We harvest 100% of the rainwater and over the entire uh, almost 900 acres of land, and uh, we will get into how we do that. We have uh, not had to cut uh, any trees. We have planted 30 to 40,000 trees every year, and even the golf course construction has been designed in such a way where we have managed to preserve all the trees. There is uh, uh, the entire landscape is is designed in a way where all the excess water overflows into uh, catchment areas, and 100% of the irrigation that is done on the site is done from harvested rain harvest water. The land topography is maintained as practically as, as it was found. Uh, almost 80% of the land is, is untouched. And uh, the entire air on the, on the campus, obviously, is 100% natural fresh air. And the air quality index is something that we take immense pride in, which is almost 70 to 80% better than what we experience in the city of Ahmedabad, which is 40 minutes away. Let me get into the details of how we managed to achieve this. Broadly, uh, we uh, have targeted four, five different aspects of uh, going green at this project. One is the design and infrastructure of the project itself. Uh, the landscaping, which obviously forms a large part of uh, the Kensville, considering it is a landscaped uh, plot, of course, and the facilities around it. The facility management, which is across the, the 75 room hotel and the houses that we develop around it. Uh, what we are able to give to our guest experience, which is very important, uh, just like Mahesh Patel was saying, it is the experience that the guests go away with, which is what will leave an, uh, a lasting impact on their minds and commit them into green soldiers. Uh, and then what is the social contribution to the environment outside of the resort? So uh, before, uh, this is what the resort uh, site looks like. This is the golf course. Uh, you see the line of trees in between. Now, these were trees which were uh, practically as it is because these are old farm fields which, which had trees on periphery. Most of the irrigated land did not have trees in between. And so we managed to actually design the golf course in such a way where we did not have to disturb the tree line. And the houses uh, that you see on the left are uh, over a 1,000 square yard 
uh, or plus, meaning 10,000 square feet and plus sizes of the plots, which also have um, several trees in each plot. And like I said before, we keep planting almost 30 to 40,000 trees every year uh, in the golf course as well as in the resort outside. And 80% of the topography of the site is preserved as it is. Uh, the, the water bodies that you see here on the golf course uh, are all designed in a way where the natural terrain is sloping towards the water body, which forms the catchment areas. And all the water that you see uh, in these water bodies are ideally rainwater harvested areas. Now, if I go back, I forgot one aspect. If this is where this, this uh, if you can see the lake I'm circling right now, that is a 40 acre lake that we have actually excavated on uh, on land that we bought, did the sale deed, converted agricultural land into non-agricultural use, and then excavated and built a land, uh, a lake, a water body uh, over 40 acres. And it was uh, a big expense in those days when we were doing this, but we realized later the amount of advantage of saving uh, in terms of water consumption because we are able to rain or harvest rainwater in that lake, which lasts us almost eight to nine months of the year. And this we've been doing for the last 20 years and we have accurate data of how much money we have saved just by building that one water body. There's a natural stream uh, that runs through the project and we are able to get uh, some catchment from that as well as the rainwater from the entire area. So all the water bodies that you see on the golf course are actually connected. Their automatic level is maintained and the natural drain from the uh, irrigation system drains into these water bodies and then eventually the excess from all these water bodies overflows into the lake. Um, the resort itself, uh, we have made a uh, special focus on uh, the vernacular, vernacular architecture and the, uh, all the buildings are designed in keeping with that aspect. Uh, there are areas of the resort which have a pitched roof with double height for ventilation and we have tried to emulate uh, some of the actual Indian ethos into that. There are verandas and open spaces, jallies, uh, um, which which will allow for air circulation and natural lighting everywhere. So that was the design concept which was originally incorporated into the master plan, which we have managed to continue even to today. Obviously the building orientation and, and the sun path analysis was done for every building so that we could maximize on the site condition and the sun uh, path analysis. Uh, there is uh, in every building on the property, we are we try and bring in the outdoors inside. So, like I said before, there are a lot of verandas. Most of the spaces, even in the resort and the rooms, are daylit, 100% daylit spaces. So, the use of uh, artificial lighting is kept to the minimum in the daytime. And all uh, rooms, as well as the restaurants or the uh, other common areas, are open to the gardens so that people have access to landscape areas outside. The fresh air is uh, most uh, rooms have full glazed windows which can open up to verandas outside and the quality of air obviously at Kensville is fantastic uh, and we are able to capitalize on that in a big way. There's a universal uh, campus which is eco-friendly. We have differently abled access for the entire campus, uh, special toilets for disabled access. Uh, they use electric cars on the entire campus, there's bicycle paths, uh, walking trails, jogging trails, uh, and all sorts of sports facilities. Um, so we are a, we take pride in the fact that we are a eco-friendly and a universally accessible campus. Some more features on the trees, like I was telling before, we plant uh, uh, thousands of trees every year. Majority of the trees, I would say 9% 9, 9 of the trees are local native trees. Uh, we do not believe in planting trees for the sake of uh, on ornamentation only. Uh, more than 50% of the topography is, is preserved as it is. We have paved areas which are used for the cart path, but majority of the other walkways and, um, and trails are unpaved or natural trails. There, there's a lot of engagement that goes with uh, along with what we do in terms of educating our guests and uh, staff and 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 the, and the members uh, which has resulted in a lot of good feedback we have actually gotten great suggestions from our guests uh, on what we need to do what we can do better we have a uh, organic garden that we have created we have a herb garden that we have created the site uh, recently one of the members uh, presented us with pictures of butterflies uh, that he had found on our campus and then we came out with a special 
book uh, on butterflies at Kensington, and we actually created a butterfly garden uh, on the campus. Again, this which came out of a suggestion that somebody uh, made at the site. Uh, we, we maintain a large nursery of trees that we grow from saplings every year, and we rarely buy uh, plants from outside anymore. There's a lot of food that we produce ourselves. Uh, we do large areas of organic farming. Uh, we grow uh, our own paddy, we grow wheat, we grow a lot of vegetables, uh, we grow juar, bajri, uh, um, and so a lot of uh, the food that is used in our restaurants or even by our residents is what is grown locally. Uh, even vegetables, we grow most of them locally, and the, like I said, the nursery. So a lot of it, uh, the nurseries people are able to take their plants from. Water efficiency is something that is extremely important to us. Uh, it's not only important because it is the right thing to do in terms of sustainability, but because it is profitable. We have managed to save almost uh, uh, 40 to 50 percent of our expense on water. Uh, our entire uh, irrigation system on the campus is automatically controlled uh, by uh, computers and we have drip irrigation in the majority of the areas and we use 100% recycled water. All the water from the sticky as well as the water from our rainwater harvesting is pulled into a lake and we use all the water on the campus from that. We are a plastic free environment. Uh, there are uh, plastic is banned on the entire site. We use recycled glass bottles for our uh, bottles. We do not use plastic bottles. We do not even use plastic straws. Um, and uh, most of our grains or even vegetables are sold in cloth bags, which are recycled. Air quality, like I was telling you before, is something we take immense pride in. Like every room that you go into Kensville as or the reception as you enter has a large display where we showcase the air quality index at Kensville versus the air quality index of major cities where our guests are coming from. And on, on average, um, uh, we, I, like as you, if you see on the screen, it is almost a tenth of what, uh, or less than a tenth of what most cities. So Ahmedabad typically would be about 160, 170, whereas Kensville is at less than 10. And we have historical data of that over the last almost 15 years. Water savings, I've already told you before, we have a large catchment area. We are able to use that. We use our natural terrain to maintain the water body. It's an unlined uh, lake. We do not have pitching or plastic lining in the lake, so it keeps recharging the, uh, the soil. And most of our uh, water bodies in the golf course have natural grass and weeds uh, so that it promotes uh, the local flora and fauna. Uh, this is an example of a natural water body. Like I said, it's again our all unlined water bodies. Uh, and we have to promote growth of natural grass in that. STPs, of course, our resort is, is uh, entirely fed into the STP, all the discharge. We do solid waste management also, uh, which is uh, recycled at the site. Organic waste is collected separately. Segregation of waste is mandatory at Kensville. All houses are given separate dustbins, and they have, over the last 15 years, we've been segregating waste, which is a huge achievement. Uh, and people will put their waste in separate bins and we are able to collect and recycle those. This uh, we have a 250 uh, KWP capacity solar plant. Uh, all the irrigation at the site is done by uh, solar. Uh, so total per total almost 60% of our energy consumption is by solar. Uh, there is only LED lighting uh, on the entire campus, including our street lights. Uh, and we are increasing our solar capacity every year. So we hope to be 100% solar dependent. Uh, in a couple of years. Zero waste, um, all organic waste converted into manure uh, and actually sold back to our residents at a, a minimal cost. So we actually make money out of the waste at site and uh, we generate uh, almost uh, almost a thousand kilos of manure every year. Uh, how profitable has this been? Uh, like I said before, it is an immense contribution to society, to environment, but more than that, it has generated tremendous amount of business for us. Uh, we run an adopt a tree program where our guests are able to adopt a tree uh, for a nominal fee like a thousand rupees, and we will take care of the fee uh, of the tree for a lifetime. Uh, we, have a, we have a name plate that we put on the tree with the guest's name on it, and they come back every year and look at that and gives them an immense amount of pride. Uh, we educate our, our guests, we do regular seminars, uh, farmers markets, biodiversity park walkthroughs, organic parks. People are able to come and experience the food that we, uh, that we grow at the site. Uh, so again, like I said, like uh, uh, we were discussing, it is extremely 
satisfying to have our guests engage in our exercise. We have come out with a flora and fauna book that we come out with every couple of years, which, which not only uh, details all the trees uh, and and uh, uh, flowers uh, and fruits of can but also the the animal and bird life at Kenswell. And it is uh, we are uh, only about 30 kilometers from the Nalsover bird sanctuary, and we get amazing amount of bird life at Kenswell, and we are able to document that, and and it, it becomes a great profitable book for Kenswell. Health and well-being, again, another aspect of it. We have an Ayurveda spa at the site. Natural uh, well-being uh, glass classes are conducted. Yoga is something that we practice very regularly at the site. Spiritual well-being is one of our focus areas. And of course, golf, walking, and cycling is something which we promote uh, on the campus. Uh, we hire only local staff. 70 to 80 percent of the people that we have at the resort are local staff, um, including our FNB and housekeeping staff are entirely. Uh, local villagers who we have trained over the years. We run local schools and we uh, engage in skill training programs in association with CREDI and IGDC. And we are able to hire almost uh, all our staff locally. Um, so, like I said before, we have come out with books that we do this. We engage in some uh, in sustainability teaching programs in the schools nearby. We conduct workshops. So that is pretty much uh, what we do in terms of social contribution. We've been blessed that a lot of VIPs have been able to have come to Kenzville and blessed us uh, from starting from Prime Minister to uh, Mr. Amitabh Bachchan. Uh, Jeev Milka Singh is our signature golf course. So we take immense pride in that. Thank you so much. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you have uh, for that. This is again a matter of immense pride that we were the first uh, golf uh, Club to get us uh, get the Kensville uh, Golf Club was the first club to get the first IGBC Green Resort rating, platinum certified in India. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, it is definitely an inspiring presentation. Looking at the complete flow, uh, right from uh, what is happening at the site, water, energy, and many other uh, activities. In fact. Uh, it also touched the point where Mr. Mahesh also mentioned the green education is also very important. Uh, thank you so much, sir. And um, uh, many uh, participants did appreciate in the messages, and they're also asking for a copy of your presentation. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. And now, uh, rightly, rightly now, uh, it's time. Uh, uh, I mean, most of uh, the participants will also be thinking, uh, what are the compliances, uh, or what are the uh, what are the main key features of uh, IGBC Green Resort Rating? Uh, we have with us uh, Mr. Uh, uh, architect Pravin Kumar Soma, who is a, a senior counselor in IGBC uh, and Green Pool, which is part of CII. is having experience of more than 21 years and is a part of uh, many uh, green building certification rating programs, uh, starting from homes, interiors, health and well-being, resort, affordable housing, and also the latest net zero rating also. He's been also facilitated more than 800 plus green building certifications and also connected uh, more than 75 uh, training programs. Uh, we requ I request uh, uh, Pravin Kumar Soma to take it forward. Thank you. Thank you, Sandeep. Uh, I think share content to be enabled. Yeah, thank you. Hope my presentation is visible. Thank you. Yes, uh, yes, I'm very happy that uh, Samirji did the first presentation so that uh, all the key concepts have been covered. So I will be happy that uh, some of the concepts I can directly <laughs> refer the slides as well. Uh, thank you, everyone, uh, or the, the people who are watching live. Uh, I'm going to deal with well on the uh, key concepts of green inter green resource rating program. So uh, as you've seen. So as you see, uh, travel and tourism in India is, we, we actually do a lot of traveling and uh, tourism, right? If you see the impact on GDP, the travel and the tourism contributes to almost close to 4.7 to 5 uh, GDP percentage. That is huge actually. And also, if you see tourism uh, boosts revenue in terms of thousands of jobs to a local the infrastructure development to government, state governments, it supports. And also, it actually enhances the, our cultural heritage. No other, no other country can do much beyond the tourism industry does. Definitely, 
on the foreign exchange, foreign uh, foreigners to the uh, tourist destinations, plus the local uh, reasons, of course, that is there. Of course, sh showing so many positives, but also there is some kind of uh, uh, GHG emission also there, contributes almost 8%. Uh, it contributes maybe due to uh, different uh, options of traveling. But if you see uh, around close to 40 to 50 percent of the uh, travel across the globe today are actually seeing or eco conscious. That means whenever they 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 want to travel, they actually picking when they when they when they picking a resort, they are actually thinking of eco tourism kind of concepts. That means which promotes responsible uh, tourism traveling. That means they, they 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 care about the greenery. They care about the biodiversity that they are doing. Just now I've seen some of the best practices by Ken Swilly. So if you see what, what is the need of uh, green resorts, we have seen that when whenever a project is constructed, okay, in terms of maintenance, right from design operation, it has got to significantly impact the environment and society in terms of electricity, water, waste management. So many things will be uh, during the operation phase. So to meet the needs of eco-conscious travelers and also to promote the local economy, local jobs creation, and it should be people-centric as to address. So unlike uh, when, when you see, uh, let's say, for example, uh, you want to pick a hotel or a resort, okay? So normally we, we pick a resort maybe because of the relaxation purpose, right? I can pick a hotel because of my official purpose. Suppose I want to go to any uh, city, Mumbai kind of thing. I only go go there and do my job meeting and go, go away. Whereas when, I, when I'm going for relaxation purpose, definitely I'll see that how can I relax for two days, three days, four days, five days, or a week to see where I can do more relaxation kind of thing to my mind, body, soul, with a, with a family get together kind of thing. So we launched uh, with the help of so many stakeholders uh, in 2015, we launched our first ever uh, IGBC Green Resource Rating Program, which is actually uni very unique uh, when you compare with any green building rating program where you talk about right from the building, we talk about building energy, water kind of thing. But here, our conceptual itself is completely different. Okay, for example, uh, what, what is a green resort when you, when you say a green resort is a facilitate a holistic approach to create environmentally friendly resort through architectural design like vernacular tea, uh, water efficiency, effective handling of waste right from its design and also post operation, energy efficient building in, in terms of envelope and also how they handle post uh, operation phase and sustainable buildings and focus on the guests comfort and well-being. So this is what we, we define uh, a green resort. When you see the green resort uh, uh, framework overall, it talks, talks about three pillars of sustainability of people, planet, and profit in terms of environment, economic, and social. So we actually, when we developed this framework, we thought, uh, unlike green buildings, the important concept that green resource address is guest perspective in, in terms of enhancing the visit experience right from the, uh, the day they enter this, this particular resort, they should see that how the experience is enhanced in terms of reducing environmental impact during their stay. And owner's perspective, when you see the facility, how they manage the facility in terms of reducing the operation, maintenance costs, and also how they minimize the environmental footprint. Not only this one, once the resort is there, how they can actually utilize the social in perspective in terms of promoting their local economy, local culture, health, community building, community development, and that particular reason also. And generally, it's like uh, increasing the local economy or increasing the regional economy. So that's what we talk about. And we actually develop some very key parameters in terms of breast experience, resort design and infrastructure that we've seen, sustainable landscape, resort facility management, social societal contribution, and of course innovation. If you see, almost more than 50% is actually about people-centric. Because uh, as I told you, the guests are a very, very important element in the green resort. Hence, all the parameters that you see actually are people-centric. So this particular rating system is applicable for both new and also existing green resorts. So the rating system has got five mandatory requirements, that means which are not compromisable. And we have 100 uh, credit points under different five different sections, which are pick and choose. Whenever a resort gets 80% above, that means when they do global leadership, they'll be achieving the platinum rating. Whenever a resort does 40% of the credits threshold, they will be getting certified level. So these are the different thresh thresholds available for this rating program. So let us let see the mandatory requirements. We have five mandatory. Uh, the, the resort project need to adhere to local building regulations and also MOF clearance to be given. Uh, minimum green cover 
to the tune of 33% of the entire site area to be there, to be, to be earmarked to able to eligible for this particular rating program. Of course, they should have a green facility management policy in place, which have a vision from the facility because uh, unless you have vision and goal set for yourself, you cannot actually increase your soul. Like for example, when you see Kens Valley, they have a, every goal, like every year they're, they're just declaring that 30 to 40,000 trees will be planted. That is a goal for the company. Similarly, under campus should be no smoking, that's anyway it is there. Of course, whatever water they let out of the campus should be treated through an on-site SCP. They can also have best, better, best practices they can adopt on-site to make this discharge possible. Maybe you can, can aim for a zero discharge of a site like this. The, I will be dwelling upon some very key uh, priority areas in the green resource. First comes is green, guest experience. So we want to create awareness among the guests to choose environmentally friendly op travel options. That means whenever a guest uh, starts booking a res green resort, let's say, for example, he can actually see, uh, suppose there are different modes of tra transportation. Let's say, for example, he picks a flight. So whenever he sees, he can, he can calculate the carbon uh, dioxide equivalent in terms of per mile, like 0 0.82, uh, whenever it travels a plane, uh, carbon dioxide equivalent uh, per passenger per mile. So how many miles he travels from his destination to the particular resort, he can calculate the carbon footprint emitted by him. Suppose he changes the mode. Let's say he, he selects a train in the same uh, website where the resource will be booking, right? So he can have this calculator. Suppose, it, let's say, he selects a train. So that is train, you can see almost it is uh, uh, 30 times lower, actually. Zero, zero point, he will be calculating the 0 0.13 carbon dioxide equivalents per passenger per mile. So miles will be same, but the carbon footprint emitted by him is almost 30 to 40 times lower. So you can contribute accordingly. So the resort also can give multiple options for the uh, guests to, to reduce his carbon footprint. For example, he can plant trees. Like right now, you have just seen consider that each uh, guest has been um, given, given a uh, the very lower price, they can plant the trees. So number of plants they they put in the in the resort, accordingly the carbon footprint can be neutralized. So they can also talk about air quality. Whenever a guest enters into a, a resort campus, they can see what is the air quality difference. So definitely there will be reduction in heat island effect. So compared to cities where we have more, heat, for example, let's say we have uh, now 35 degrees due to greenery the temperature may look like only 30 degrees because of greenery. It's called heat island effect. Our green resorts are actually mitigating the heat island effect through so many means. So they can have eco-friendly transportation, like for example, they can use electrical vehicles, maybe solar powered vehicles within the campus so that the pollution levels have decreased. So they can have so many different best practices they can follow in the guest experience. Similarly, how can they engage the guests? For example, many resorts have something called as nature walk. That means, Whenever a guest uh, research, they can have a schedule. The, the itinerary is given so that they can have a nature walk at so and so time. That means guests, guests are free to join in a local guide for a walk around to study the flora and fauna because each resort is unique. Because, for example, Kerala has got its own uh, uniqueness. Gujarat may be having own uniqueness. Goa may be having own uniqueness. So each city has got each city, state city has got its own unique culture and uh, heritage. So, so they can actually identify so many things. Similarly, seed to cup. It is like a study tour, understanding coffee seed. This is actually happening in Kurg. One more resort has got in-house bakery. That means the guests can bake their own cookies and pack when they actually return to the journey. Agro-tourism is once again promoted by many resorts where the visitors will be have opportunity to farm actually. Today, many of our corporate during the work from home have been going to their own towns to once again do a farming. Okay, to, to, to actually feel the actual work. So that also actually uh, can be one of the best thing they can do, like real-time farmers, they can engage with the farming and they can grow vegetables uh, from the same uh, farmland. Not only this one, very important aspect to the health and well-being. See, why we go to resource to actually uh, rejuvenate our body, right? So there can be a physical well-being in terms of cycling, boating, so many things. Then also spiritual well-being in terms of meditation classes, so many things. Uh, then they can also in, in, include along with the farmers to grow organic food, uh, local foods, local recipes, uh, along with the chefs, so that they can do, they can do a variety of things. So ultimately, what I'm talking about is they can also have uh, the some of the medicinal, uh, I mean, uh, 
drinks which normally will not get some uh, anywhere else actually only in some places they have their own unique uh, things which actually can actually uh, completely i can say non toxic uh, free free they'll make the entire body actually so those kind of things will be very unique to each each place that also can be practiced actually so they can enhance the well being of the guests not only this one we have to talk about enhanced biodiversity see here in cities we miss butterflies we miss dragonflies we, our children will not see but when you go closer to nature, we can see all these things actually live there. Because in our childhood, we can see sparrows we used to come out of our windows. Butterflies also we can we used to play. But now, very difficult to find these things at our uh, house. We should go to parks only to actually see these things, right? So when we whenever we go to resort, we can actually see all these things live. Insects, bad butterflies, different kinds of butterflies. Just now, uh, Samaji just told about the butterfly gardens. So that means each species that a plant will be very unique to attract these butterflies. They can have a different uh, plant species. In the Kensville itself, uh, the project actually adopted some four to five engaged four to five people, except especially only for to, taking the photography of unique plants, unique trees, unique butterflies, and they actually published this this very beautiful uh, uh, catalogs of uh, books. So like this, they, they can identify unique species of each uh, area, landscape uh, teams, they can have different landscape teams, uh, so that uh, it can be, I mean, they, they can be enhanced the biodiversity. For example, they can have a set of targets. Like for example, today they have a thousand trees per, uh, let's say two acres, or maybe one acre they have from some trees, right? They can increase every year on year. So let's say they have 80% biodiversity, they can target to 81% for next year. Like you know, Bhutan is uh, known for the highest uh, biodiversity. It's almost 80% uh, plus actually. Even uh, if it's Singapore, they're talking right now it's 60 to 65%. They're talking 100% in next uh, 10 years time. So like this, the, the resort also can aim for 100% biodiversity. How can they engage? How, how can they increase uh, new species, new uh, new things that they can do adopt? For example, they can adopt uh, the neighboring uh, water bodies, which are may, maybe in, in, in a different state, they can actually rejuvenate the water bodies. So many things they can actually do out beyond the fence activities also. Similarly, indoor plants, not only outside, it, it can be like uh, from inside, how it can be uh, outside. Now we are actually talking about bio, biophilic architecture, where these indoor plants have been in placed so that they actually purify the air in the, within the indoor, because indoor air is actually almost four to five times polluted than the outside air. So today, uh, if you see where we are working, working from home, right? If we are closing all the windows, they're putting in the AC. But uh, do you think that AC, you, we, the AC environment is uh, very good for us? It is very bad actually because we are increasing the CO2 levels constantly. To handle this situation, we can also have, we can actually go with indoor plants. These plants are naturally air purifiers, so they actually purify. They also give more oxygen levels and also parallel absorb the carbon dioxide levels. So that actually balances the uh, best. Uh, life or maybe they can actually increase our health uh, health conditions in the space indoor spaces similarly we can also promote green education uh, one of the thing uh, that we we think is uh, by having this green education the guests the visitors who are there they can engage in such a way that they can sensitize towards the biodiversity for example one of the resort uh, this this particular uh, picture was seeing here uh, it is in uh, pragati uh, resource in hyderabad uh, i am actually uh, after seeing this picture i actually have very happy actually felt it, they, have, they have put in a 125 year old tree. They put a sticker actually before this uh, tree. It shows that if you uproot one tree, which is a 50, 50 plus years old tree, that means you're actually uh, uh, removing a 4.6 crore worth of tree, actually live tree. So if you see here, they have been a breakup also. For example, a tree, which is 50 plus years old tree, can contribute to almost 6.82 lakhs of oxygen during its life. 1.95 lakhs worth of animal flesh and bones, because it is uh, in the earth, right? They actually absorb so many things. 6.5 lakhs worth soil fertility and control soil erosion. Almost 100 lakhs of water recycling. It does naturally, actually. And also, of course, the during this uh, 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 raining, it also addresses the erosion factor. Almost 84 lakhs worth of sheltering birds, squirrels, insects. Not only this one, they, it removes uh, sulfur, uh, carbon dioxide from air, right? And also, most importantly, it actually uses flowers or useful medicine plants. That is, nobody still have not counted it. So, loss of one fallen tree is almost close to 461 lakhs worth. So, unless the unless we show the value of each tree, I think we will not uh, 
uh, will not be able to cut that phenomenon. We'll always see for planting more trees. So that's what uh, you should promote more in uh, all the buildings, not only resorts. So that, that's what we promote. And also, the resort can also promote towards net zero. For example, let's say, for example, they have their uh, today estimating X, X as their energy consumption. How can they see that they can do X minus 5% year on year? It can, it can be one, directly X minus 100%, can be X minus 5%, X minus 10%, like this, they can target each year. So likewise, they can target energy consumption. So how many units they, they estimate, consume today? How can they go with harvesting in terms of solar, maybe wind farms, so that they can go for a clean energy instead of reducing dependency on the grid? Similarly, they can reduce the water consumption. They can have rainwater harvesting in place. They can use STPs to treat the wastewater and reuse for the landscaping purposes, or maybe they can use for their chillers, or they can use for the dual plumbing for their water, water, water fixtures, or they can use for uh, some other purpose. So, so that the portal water will be only utilized for drinking purpose. Similarly, waste segregation. So ideally, whatever waste that is generated in the kitchen or uh, throughout the garden waste that can be treated on site so that this can be utilized as a manure. I just know we heard from Kensville that they, they almost sell outside actually, almost 1000 plus cases will be sold outside, which is after using in for their landscaping purposes. Also, they can produce biogas bio for once again, uh, divert to the kitchens. So this, this way, the waste which is there, it will be completely diverted from the landfill. Ultimately, we want India to be cleanest country. That, that's what the resource can actually do, a, a major, uh, major thing in terms of infrastructure facilities. Also, by design, the resource can have green procurement. What it is, is it demonstrates the commitment to purchase green products during its operation phase to lower their environmental impact. For example, let's say uh, they can use, instead of uh, plastic uh, cutleries, they can use economical, uh, eco-friendly cutleries. It can be steel, it can be uh, paper, I mean, paper paste, it can be leaf-based kind of thing. They can use all bamboo-based uh, products. Uh, instead of plastic products, they can use steel cutlery, glass bottles. Uh, if you see one of the uh, coffee cup in one of the resort we've seen, they're made from rice husk. It is also printed uh, that uh, this is made from rice husk. That means, uh, which is a uh, rapid learning material they used instead of plastic. So, so many things we can actually adopt to reduce the waste by design. And also, this is one of the fundamental aspects of the green procurement for a green resource as well. Similarly, uh, India, as you know, we have plus 50 to 60 plus actually uh, different cultures in India. Whatever city, whatever state you take, it has got its own culture, heritage, own sports, local sports. Then uh, we, we can have different artifacts. The vernacular architecture is different. So suppose, let's, let's say, for example, it's not designed, envelope. The envelope can be some of the vernacular elements of the same local region. So that actually increases the architecture elements. That means we are, we are actually uh, going for modern architecture. That means we are de putting decrease in our uh, ancient, ancient architecture for the particular region. Let's say, for example, Jap uh, our Jaipur is known for what? Pink city. Why? We see uh, Hawa Mahal always. We reflect because of one building we see the city is actually important. Similarly, so Gujarat, as a Gir forest. Similarly, uh, Kerala, when you go, it is very famous for boat houses, right? So, like this, each area has got its own uh, very unique thing. Food is famous across each region. So, those can be actually promoted uh, and also local uh, people can be hired so that local job also can be increased, local culture. So, all should be done within 50 kilometers from the resort. So that the people residing over the uh, around the resorts can be well utilized. So these things. So whenever a, a resort aims for greening, what it does is one, primarily it, re it reduces 30 to 40 percent of its energy consumption by design because they will adopt best ways of reduction in energy, efficient lighting, efficient appliances, efficient energy envelope. 40 50 percent reduction in water consumption because they may use sprinkler drip irrigation for sprinkling of using of water for landscaping they may be using what best water fixtures so enhanced operating costs they may be using any efficient uh, uh, chiller machines for the air conditioning enhance the biodiversity definitely by by design they may increase the number of plants number of trees every year on year internal benefits not only tangible there are enormous internal benefits. For example, they'll be having air quality, as you've seen in the Kens Valley. In the resort, it is almost one by tenth compared to city level, right? And has a brand image. 
compared to all the resorts, whenever a resort exhibits best practices, it has got image will be go, goes up 10 times. It attracts only environmentally conscious tourists across the globe. Whenever a tourist coming from outside the India, definitely they'll pick only the green resort. Not only this one, national benefits are this resource contributes to almost 20 to 30 percent in power and water demand of the state. Because when the state is putting investment in infrastructure, the resource is already putting infrastructure to treat the waste by, by having a OWC maybe. Treat the wastewater through having a STP. Uh, going for a solar PV, that means that de decreasing the demand on the grid power. Also, better handling of waste, contribution local economy because they're creating jobs, local green jobs for the local people. So ultimately, they can be a role model in the entire uh, hospital sector. So if you see the certification process of green resource, it's a very simple process. Uh, they can register with IGBC.in website. And uh, the team can actually download our IGBC green resource rating program from the resources setting. From there, they can uh, see the document required for each credit, how they can document. They can submit the document for IGBC. It will be available with third party sir, the first time. Then once we get the from the third party, we do a quality check we, before we send to the project team. They, they can uh, do the clarification from their side. Once again, IDBC does the final review. Before releasing the award, we do a physical visit or virtual visit, depending on the situation. And uh, finally, we award the project uh, review. Once the project accepts the rating level, they'll be awarded with the play and certificate. So this is a very simple certificate process, more or around uh, 30 to 60 days time timeline is the uh, overall uh, rating level, depending on the quality of submission they do. So this timeline is actually uh, is uh, 30 to 60 days is, is uh, the final maximum timeline. So that's it from uh, IGBC Green Resource Team. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Praveen, for uh, uh, elaborating the a very exhaustive uh, green re resort rating program in a span of 20 minutes. I understand it's very tough, but uh, thank you so much. And uh, there's some couple of questions coming there, and maybe we will address them in the Q&A session. Uh, now uh, it's time to hear uh, from one of the key stakeholders uh, in the in the resort uh, industry, uh, that is Mahindra Holidays and Resorts. We have with us uh, Mr. Burhardin Sayed, who is the corporate chief engineer. Um, he's a mechanical engineer by profession, having 27 years of experience in facilities management and engineering of hospitality industry with strong belief in sustainable operations. His, his rich experience with the various hospitality uh, multinational companies in India and abroad like Taj, Jakar, etc. Currently working with Mahindra Holidays and Resorts as corporate chief engineer since 2018. Handling multiple projects with multiple responsibilities like uh, EHS, Facility management, renovations, conversions of new these projects to uh, MHRL standards, etc., is uh, driving sustainable and profitable engineering operations for the company by various means and commitments like uh, RE100, EP100, uh, carbon neutrality by 2030, HBTI, uh, Z, uh, zero waste to landfill, and also all the green building certifications with IGBC, uh, CI IGBC. Need to mention that um, uh, Mahindra Holidays and Resorts uh, Club Mahindra, which is uh, also the uh, founding member of IGBC and also the signatory for the Net Zero Movement. Uh, welcome, sir. The floor is yours. Thank you, Sandeep. Uh, thank you for that uh, introduction. And you know, after so many lovely presentations, uh, I thought it was wonderful and a lot of learnings. I would say. Now I'll share my presentation as to what we are doing at MHRIL. Uh, just to give you a brief, you know, before joining Mahindra Holidays, for me, I worked for many multinational companies, hospitality companies. I was thinking that uh, sustainability means like, you know, saving few drops of water here and there, few units of electricity for the purpose of the sake of saving the cost. That was what I all was knowing. But joining Mahindra, you know, especially the group company and Mahindra Holidays was a big, big eye opener for me. And I realized the importance of sustainability, of doing a sustainable business is why it's more important than anything else, you know. This is a big, big learning on a personal front for me. So I would like to start from the main, uh, you know, the reason or the drive why we are all talking about sustainability today, just for the sake of there will be many new participants who are there. 
Okay, this is the main reason why we all are, uh, uh, you know, discussing all these things uh, today because of we want to arrest the rise in temperatures, global warming, you know, as, as part of the Paris Accord, many world companies have, you know, signed for this and India is also part of this Paris Accord and you, you also committed to reduce your carbon emissions. So, this is the main reason why the whole things are happening and I will take you through step by step how we are aligned to all these commitments as a group and as a company as MHRIL. So, of course, he's the driver, he is the motivating force uh, for the group companies. Mr. Anand Mendra himself is the front, uh, front runner as far as sustainability is concerned. He was the co-chair for Global Climate Action Summit, you know, and then he has committed that all the group companies will become carbon neutral by 2040. All the group companies uh, will sign science-based target initiatives. So, I'll take you through this uh, initiative as we go along. These are various articles which has come in newspapers of our commitments and I'm proud to say that, you know, there are many first as a group we have uh, done first to commit for doubling our energy productivity, first to carbon neutral factory in India, first to use carbon price in India, first to reach zero waste to landfill as a factory in India, first to join science based target program in India, first holiday resort to be 100% renewable energy powered in India, Ghana, first vacation ownership company to in, in India to commit for RE and EP 100. First company in, in, in the NBFC sector to submit SBT target. First company in the mining and metal sector to get SBT approved. First company in the automobile and component sector to get SBT approved. And this is what sustainability means to us in the business here. Building enduring businesses by rejuvenating the environment and enabling stakeholders to rise. So we are talking about rejuvenating the environment, you know, giving it more than what we might have damaged, given the, done the damage to the environment. This is a big statement and we all live by this. This is the way of life for all of us in Mahindra holidays and uh, Mahindra. This is our uh, uh, framework, sustainability framework. You know, we are trying to achieve, uh, mitigate uh, or climate change and it, it rises on three main pillars basically of planet, people and profit. So obviously if all the stakeholders are taken care of, you know, we'll have the enduring businesses and it's done by partnering, learning, sharing, giving back more than we take. Okay, so I'll cover this aspect one by one as we go through uh, the other slides. About MHRL, you know, we are part of the Mahindra Group uh, companies. We are the largest vacation ownership companies in India. And we have got more than 250,000 members. We have got 100 plus resorts all over the world. And we have got more than 3,700 keys. And we have got very aggressive plans of expansion. And we'll be almost looking at doubling our you know, uh, room counts as well as our member base and mission is good living, happy family. So we are known for this and, you know, it's a very, we, we take pride in saying that, you know, we are, uh, we are here to serve uh, the families, uh, happy families vacations, which is no other company, I think, does that to what we do. Vision, we will be almost among the top five view vacation ownership companies of the world in the terms of member base. Why sustainability is important to MHRN? It helps us reduce our impact on the environment, increases productivity by minimizing wastage, enhances brand reputation, gives competitive advantage, no doubt about it. Aim for sustainable business which would lead to better cost rather than focusing on reducing a cost as every cost saving measure may not be sustainable, but every sustainable measure would lead to cost saving. This is what my personal learning, which I was uh, started by a session with. MHRN, this is a sustainability policy. Uh, we focus on Three basic triple bottom line focus, which is economic sustainability, social sustainability, and environmental sustainability. These are three main important focus of our policies. And this is our leaders has to say. So this is the complete alignment as I was saying, you know, right from top uh, till the company level. You know, I strongly believe that corporations must run as commercial entities while being 100 percent accountable for the social and environmental impacts. Mr. Kavinder Singh is MD and CEO. And we want to be the leaders in responsible tourism and set up new benchmarks for ecotourism and hospitality in, the, in India. This is my boss, Mr. Miguel Monos, Chief Resorts Officer. So a lot of support from them, a lot of drive, a lot of inspiration for all the all the stakeholders, you know, we are working towards and we look forward toward the leadership for driving these initiatives. This is how we are rejuvenating the environment, you know, water positive, green building certifications, carbon neutrality, zero waste to landfill, biodiversity. And I would like to say what, what is different than any other hotel company or any other company is normally are doing. They all are doing, yes, they are doing it, but commitment, that is what the difference is. We are all committed. We have signed various commitments with Climate Group that, you know, we'll be committing and we'll be reducing our numbers and reporting our numbers to them voluntarily. 
So all these commitments are a commitment from our side. It's not only a statements. So water positive, six of our resorts are self-reliant right now as we speak. Many more will be added because we have got rainwater already structures. We have got lakes and ponds created within the resort. 50% of total water consumed is recycled. When audit and certification of 14 resorts in F22 and complete all resorts in the next three years by TUE, where you know water security certification will be done. Green building certification, we have we are, uh, members with green uh, IGBC, CI IGBC. We have signed, we have committed that in within three years, all our resorts will be certified as green buildings uh, resorts. And we are committed to carbon neutrality to become carbon neutral by 2040. So what are we doing for this? You know, we'll have a RE100 program, which is all our resorts will be on 100% renewable energy by 2050. We'll be improving our productivity by 100% by 2030. And we are also working on science-based target initiatives, which is a very scientific method of measuring and monitoring your emissions and finding ways and means of reducing those emissions. And we'll also have zero waste to landfill certifications. Four of four of our resorts are already certified as zero waste to landfill by uh, TUV and uh, the Bureau of Veritas. And now we have signed up with underwriter laboratories UL that another three years, all of our resorts will go through this process of certification and we'll ensure that we'll, we are not sending any waste to landfill. Biodiversity, uh, it's a big thing for us because most of our resorts are sitting in a very, uh, you know, unique locations, which is very close to the environment to ensure that before starting any project also, we do the uh, biodiversity assessment and mapping so that all flora and fauna is taken care of and we live, you know, in eco-friendly manner with all the surroundings. We don't, we, we do not disturb anything. We have got biodiversity assessment done for our Virajpet and Madikeri which is part of the international case study through IBBI, wherein in Madikeri resort, especially, you know, we were planning to install air conditioners and then uh, we realized that, you know, it will not be a wise decision to do that. We did a biodiversity assessment done. And based on that study, it was suggested that you, why don't you create certain water bodies around your resorts and plant some native trees, which we did. And the result was phenomenal, you know, and we could scrap off using the installation, the project of installation of air conditioners in the resort. And the temperature in the resort is two or three degrees lesser than the surrounding in the core region there. And still we do not have any air conditioners in, our, in the resort. And this is likewise for another eight or 10 resorts where we do not have air conditioners till date. And we are not even looking at that as an option because we want to always look at for some other means of reducing the uh, ambient temperatures. Butterfly gardens are there in many of our resorts. So we have got organic gardens, we have got hydroponics. Uh, we, have, we, we propose that you know we'll get this IBBI certification for biodiversity for uh, 15 of our resorts in coming three, three years. As I said, we are the India's first hospitality company to join global campaign of RE100 EP100. We believe these initiatives are in alignment with the mission of good living in happy families. So all our resorts will be on 100% renewable energy by 2050. All our resorts will double up our productivity per occupied room night by 2030. And we are also signed for EP100 cooling challenge because we it is also part of this EP100 overall commitment. Whereas we know that 55% of the com consumption comes from the air conditioning. So we have signed a special commitment on behalf of EP100 cooling where we are monitoring specific consumption of air conditioners and how do we mitigate and reduce the impact of that. Carbon neutrality. You will achieve carbon neutrality becoming by, by 2040 by doing all these initiatives of RE100, EP100 and tree plantation. I'll take you through how we'll do that and how you're doing it exactly in the resorts. Science-based target initiative to map our carbon footprints and reduce our GHG emissions. And it's not only about reducing carbon emissions, it's also about reducing your GHG emissions, which is related to your direct activities, also indirect activities. So this is a very, very scientific method of mapping each and every activity of your direct and indirect activities and generating the emissions related to all the activities and finding out the ways and means of mitigating all those things. It is all scope one, scope two, scope three emissions. And after COP26, the commitments have increased now. We all have been doing that, but these are not commitment to that extent, apart from RE100, EP100, you know, being water positive. Now we have started with gold standards and governance, carbon pricing emphasis, project Hariyali, and you have got the deadlines against each. Nani Kali, educate 1 million girl child, empower, women empowerment, zero virtual level, carbon neutrality. So this is the new uh, guideline from the company now. So after COP26, this is 10 commitments. We will be initiating this, implementing in our companies and all across. This is how we'll achieve carbon neutrality, RE100, EP100 and Hariyali. These three things majorly will take us to the becoming carbon neutral. If we are not signed for anything, you know, so our carbon emissions would have been to this much, 13,000 tons, you can see from this map. This is our project emission trajectory. If you have not signed for any RE100, any EP100, this is what we would have been doing. And after EP100, you know, in by 2040, 
So the emissions will reduce down to 66,930. There is a gap of 50%. So we'll achieve at least 80% of resorts or 32% of renewable energy will be achieved. The emissions will be reduced by 32% and we'll be left only with 18% for offsetting the carbon emissions. So that is where our Hariali program will come in and it will assist us to become carbon neutral by 2040. This is what the broader roadmap uh, for the MHRL. This is all the group companies have done it like this. And so apart from that, that, you know, as a national grid, state grids, they are also having got uh, obligations for doing it more renewable power or honorable prime minister of India is also committed towards sustainability and improving our RE100 numbers for the country. Recently, we has committed that India will also be a net zero uh, country by 2070, which is great for all of us, you know, and this will definitely help us to achieve our numbers much earlier than our committed targets. How do we track? As I said, we are not only uh, talking about it, but we are also tracking it through all third party companies. You know, Climate Group is the one who is doing all this tracking for us. We are reporting our numbers to GRI. We are, we have signed up for science-based target initiatives and we will also go ahead with carbon disclosure programs very shortly. As I explained, science-based target is a very scientific method of ensuring that whatever activities, whatever uh, uh, initiatives you are taking, it's actually helping in reduction in your GHG emissions. If whatever initiatives you do, if it is not helping in your reducing your GHG emissions, then of course you are not working towards mitigating the climate risk. This is a very, very scientific method and we have committed towards this and this is helping in a big manner. You can see scope for emissions is whatever on-site uh, diesel generations, company-owned vehicles, LPG, coal, gel fuel, whatever you use on-site, this is all a scope for emissions. Scope for emissions is electricity purchased from grid. Scope for emissions is purchased goods and services, employee commute, business travel, wage generated, etc. So we have got a complete mapping of, of all the scopes. And this is a five years sustainably roadmap. As I said, we have a target of 2050, 2030, 2040. So what in the next five years? What are we do we do that? You know, so this is what we have done the roadmap as a company. So the short term, short term targets. So we'll be water positive. So this is you can see the numbers worked out. There is no time for the so I'll just quickly take you through this. Zero is to land phase certificate. Currently we are at four. This year will be 18 resorts, then we'll be 30 resorts. Next year will be all 42 resorts will be certified. And our 100% EP100 occupied room night energy productivity, which was 61% last year, this year it will be 67%, then we'll move to 72%, and then we'll move to 77%. We have a detailed plan, I will take you through that as we move ahead. And ultimately 80%. RE100 currently we're sitting at 37%, including grid and on-site, 45% next year it will be, then 40, 53%, then 62%, and fifth year it will be 66%. Number of trees plantation, this is what the plan is. EV100, all our vehicles in our resorts operations will be 100% on electric vehicles. So this is here. We are very slow here currently because we are supposed to use a lot of Mahindra vehicles. So uh, there are not very good uh, electric vehicles available in the market, but now we have got a lot of options available. So we have got very aggressive plans to ensure that all our resorts and internal external mobility vehicles, we have got more than 173 vehicles in the resort, all will be converted to electric vehicles. And this is our carbon neutrality scope and scope to emissions. And this is the plan how we are going to reduce this emissions in terms of uh, tons of carbon dioxide. Carbon neutrality, this is including scope three. Scope three is a challenge, scope one, scope two, scope three, but we are definitely going to uh, work towards this also to ensure that we achieve a reduction in our scope three emissions as well. How do we deliver in resorts? So this, you know, we have done an internal benchmarking because very, we are a very big resort company and we cannot compare our consumption with the city-based hotels. So what we have done, how do we ensure that what, you know, what more is uh, more or not more, you know? So we have done a benchmarking for our non-AC resorts, AC resorts on hill, coastal resorts, working on chiller, plant, VRV, and split ACs, extreme climate resorts. So we can compare these resorts on consumption based on their locations, and based on their climatic conditions, based on the kind of equipment they're using. So non-AC resorts should have 18 kilowatt uh, units per available room per day. Hill resorts with AC should have 22 kilowatt units. Extreme climate resorts should have 28 units per available room per day. Coastal resorts, KWH for chiller, which are operating a chiller, should have 40 units per available room per day. Power failure percentage should be lesser than 8% as compared to total power. Power failure percentage, the, now we are uh, uh, link, synchronizing our solars with gensets, 5%. Water kiloliter, these are our targets what we have taken internally as the benchmark for us. And this is what how the resorts are faring currently at the benchmark line. You can see we have also done the resorts operating on chiller, on split AC, on VRV. So, Earlier, we were thinking that chiller is a very good uh, thing, you know, most efficient system, but whatever was good yesterday is not good today. You know, that is how you have to keep evolving yourself. We have realized that inverter ACs are giving better efficiencies than, you know, the chiller plants. 
So you can see the split ACs, inverter ACs are at 30 units per available room as compared to chiller AC operated uh, resort, which is consuming 40 units per available room. So this is how we realize that there are a lot of gaps within the system and we can definitely improvise upon all these things. And this is for hill station and extreme climate conditions. This is the benchmarking line and this is where the resorts are doing. Are you ended? So this is a big commitment. As I said, we are already sitting at 45%, 28% on grid and 17% on site, which is almost more than 3 megawatts of on site plant currently we have. So what are we doing for this? We are working on on grid, off grid and hybrid solar systems. Bifacial solar panels and guest rooms and guest rooms, which can be used as the roof of a restaurant. It can be used as a cover for the pathways because it looks very beautiful. Because, you know, being a resort, we don't want to look like a solar factory. So that is what the idea is. So uh, we are also working on energy storage system, whereas the batteries has been a very good thing now to use thermodynamic solar heating, solar hot water generators, micro wind turbines. So there are micro and hydro turbines. We are not only dependent on solar, but wind, hydro and all those things are being used. Biomass generation is the latest thing which we have thought, you know, with all the resorts will be working on to generate this uh, renewable energy. EP100 is a product improving of productivity where more most of all our fans are replaced with BLDC fans. We have replaced, we are replaced all um, or heat pumps are being replaced with uh, uh, heat pumps, geysers, and we are putting all inverter ACs now. We are putting all occupancy sensors in our guest rooms and public areas, power factor correction, energy efficient room heating systems, energy management system, building management systems. In every property has got an energy saving action plan based on the location and climatic conditions. For hot, we have got a different uh, energy saving action plan. For colder climate, we have got a different energy saving action plan. And using thicker and th thicker and thinner duvets in our rooms, you know, rather than using the same GSM duvets everywhere, because the guests will normally put on the AC on 21 degrees, put on the fan also, and pull over the duvet, and then say AC is not cooling. So there's no point having the same duvets everywhere. So you can have thicker and thinner duvets and maintain the temperature so that you know the guests feel comfortable. Energy audits is also part of this. You can see the journey in, 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 in the productivity what we have improved. You know, it's currently standing at 61 percent. So there is a growth, constant growth of four to five percent every year we are doing. And this is what for water conservation we are doing. Uh, you know, we have got 42 points water neutrality plan made for each and every of our resorts. We have got IoT based real time monitoring systems which we can which can monitor and manage our water. Uh, this thing it can also monitor monitor our STPs on real time to give us COD VOD levels and how the STPs are performing. You know, we are having rainwater harvesting structures in many of our resorts. We have put sensor uh, tap. We have put four restrictors on all resorts. We have the new things is all the new resorts we are coming up will have a separate black and gray water treatment. And also in the existing resort, also we are trying to do block wise treatment of the water. So the gray water is treated separately and black water is treated separately. So the recovery of water is much higher. Added to water generator in coastal climates will definitely have digital monitoring of all these things. So this is what I talked about all these things. Circular economy, you know, uh, zero waste to landfill. This is also very, very important thing where we are talking about. Uh, the resort getting certified on this responsible sourcing natural compost rather than using you know organic based composting machines why waste power for composting uh, uh, food waste or any other ways you know use natural composting methods that's better deal with authorized cyclers benchmark on the food waste stages you know for per per cover how much wastage of food is happening food waste to energy by converting into biogas in house and through third parties this is we are doing a bottling plant with some other companies also we are assisting with us energy generation from biomass waste bins without liners one or two liters paint tins instead of giving five liters paint uh, tins and all, you know, which is getting normally wasted and expiry dates monitoring organic farming hydroponics. So these are glass bottles in restaurants, washing room linen, and we are providing flask in the room. We don't give plastic bottles in our room, in our guest rooms. This is one of the examples of best out of waste studio. This is in a Madikeri resort. A lot of waste is used uh, to ensure that they have made a beautiful studio there which is a, a, a very pleasant site for a, most of our guests They frequent this place and they are all appreciating it. You can see a lot of waste stuff which is there. You can see this as I take you through all made out of all waste. Thermocol art painting of the thermocol. Annexure, you know. We call it as 3 R studio. See this plastic bottle. They have made kind of a seating uh, from plastic bottles. These are the guests, those are, you know, appreciating our efforts there. And total 1246 families has visited this and this is social social media mentions are 1691. And this is what we are planning to uh, roll out in all our resorts, you know, this uh, three hour studios. This is sustainable procurement initiative sourcing all responsibly correct material from the beginning itself so that, you know, your waste generation is very less. We are using 
soap dispensers in our rooms, you know, and we are not using any soap or any other uh, uh, non-eco-friendly chemicals. Other initiative, as I said, green building certification will be done for all resorts. More than 50% of staff is hired locally. We ensure that we, we engage local people for most of our services and take buy, buy things from them. Stakeholder engagement and materiality assessment, sustainability roadmap and mapping, SDGs. Sustainability report will be coming out for the first time now in FY22. Risk assessment and management, biodiversity assessment for properties. And these are the results. I'll just take you through this quickly. Because if you see the complete absolute tons of uh, total energy in gigajoules which you have consumed in 17, 18, 18, 19, 19, 20. Denominator is the number of rooms occupied and specific energy is per occupied room, right? How am I improving? You, feel, you can see there's a good improvement of 0.26 to 0.270, 0 0.230, 0 0.213. And there's a percentage change of 1.2%, 14.9%, 7.5%. So constant improvement is happening in our productivity and reduction is happening in our consumption. In terms of carbon emission reduction, you can see specific emissions have reduced from 0.042 to 0.40, 0 0.37, 0 0.34. Specific change, you know, and beautifully, this, all these initiatives are helping us. This is our HLP cost per available room. In last four or five years, you can see this, what it has come down to from 395 rupees per available room, it has come down to 300 rupees per available room. Because we had got more than 10 or 12 properties where we are generating hot water on diesel. We have eliminated all those a diesel uh, thing, you know, we are finally on heat pumps for all our hot water requirements in those properties where we are operating on diesel boilers. So that is one big initiative which has helped us a lot. This is HLP performance overall in terms of uh, gigajoules of energy. You can see the, the improvements, what we have done in this, all the field water, DG diesel, non-DG diesel and SOR is increasing all over. Challenges and way forward, we want to do this five years sustainability roadmap for all our properties. We want to be net zero in energy certification, want to be signed off. Uh, now for our for properties, net zero and water certifications to be started. Scope three emission reduction remains a challenge. I told you we are working very closely towards this awareness and training. And one interesting thing we have taken internal challenge is three zero emission. What is three zero emission is all about? Zero DG diesel. You know we can we can eliminate or rid get rid of the DG usage completely because handling, pilferage, lot of issues with the DG gensets as well and maintenance of genset. So energy storage systems you are working with, hybrid solar, inverter bulk, industrial UPS, electric vehicles to eliminate zero, zero liquid discharge, another point, 40 points, water treatment plant, gray and black water treatment, IoT based water monitoring system, block wise treatment, zero waste to landfill. So these are the three zero mission what we've taken for ourselves. And these are the growth levers, which I already explained. We are focusing on energy efficient kitchen where all LPGs will be replaced, LPG burners will be replaced with inductions ultimately. And all those inductions will be, will be operating on solar. So this is how our scope and emissions will be taken care of in the kitchens will become our efficient kitchens. Building management system, contactless services, smart rooms and IoT based housekeeping services. This is what we are working very closely toward. This is a model resort in uh, Asunara recently done. You know, it's got a largest solar park of 760 kilowatt week and it has got a biodiversity park. It has got an adventure park. It has got a water park and very smartly designed. And this is the way forward for all of us. So at least one resort in each cluster will be a model resort and then there will be a one block in each resort which will be a model block. This is a stakeholder engagement. Quickly, these are all pictures I'll quickly take you through. Nothing more than that in this. The local experiences. How do we engage with the local communities? What do we do with the suppliers, stakeholders? We ensure that we train them on all our sustainability initiatives. This is the engagement and activities, the organic uh, buffets in our resorts. This is the green trails, nature trails, ESOP, Haryali, Earth Day celebrations. Few more. This is what we have installed in our resorts, which is renewable energy, OWC waste to wealth, as I said, natural composting, biogas, there is no room for plastic, rainwater harvesting structures, bee farming, Biodiversity, we have got lovely birds and lovely things which is coming to our resort and all mapped. These are a few accolades. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for delivering the powerful presentation on uh, the initiatives of uh, uh, Mahindra Resorts uh, towards sustainability and um, Great to see the the starting with the vision breaking up into uh, five year and also breaking up into uh, at a room level 
uh, or different resorts and, and also monitoring across all the uh, chain of uh, uh, resorts across India and also uh, 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 and, uh, very inspiring to see the, uh, the way you are taking it forward, sir. I'm sure many resort uh, uh, and uh, hotels who have been uh, participating in this uh, uh, webinar would get inspired and also get uh, a, a clue from you to take it uh, in other initiatives further. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Thank you so much for inviting me and giving me the opportunity. Thank you. Always, sir. Thank you. Uh, now we have uh, one more interesting uh, case study on Jackson uh, in Hotel, uh, which is IPBC Platinum Certified Hotel. We have with us Mr. Sandeep Tanalekar, who is the managing director for Jackson Hospitality, who hails from Goa and is the, man, uh, the managing director for Jackson Hospitality. The Jackson Inns uh, of Alton, Maharashtra, is uh, India's first IGBC platinum rated hotel in its class. Mr. Tanalekar is a proud fellow of the IGBC and is a member of the National Executive Committee of I, uh, CI IGBC. He is a member of Executive Committee of Hotel and Resort Association, Western Region. He completed his master's education from uh, Purdue University, USA. His goal is to achieve a life balance between family, work, service, and uh, uh, service towards Mother Earth and spirituality. Uh, over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, sir, can you unmute, sir? Very good evening to everybody. Namaskar. Bharat Bab, to begin with, I am very, very proud, very humbled that you invited me on this panel of stalwarts. I mean, every presentation has been, you know, one better than the other. But I must say that there is one string that goes through all presentations, and I, I use a, you know, a, a dialogue from an old movie, very famous movie. And I like to say, Hamare khayalat kitne milte julte hai. And uh, so, you know, I won't bore uh, our panelists. I will not bore our, uh, our participants who have given us so much time by giving you technical data. But I would like to share more of a story of at least my story. So if you don't mind, the next uh, 15 to 17 minutes, uh, I will tell you a story of how we achieved what we have achieved and how we aspire to achieve the future. So uh, Jackson is a company that started in 1947 uh, and started as a pump company, went into generators, Today is an OEM for Cummins India, a very famous company that diversified into uh, solar, now has diversified into hydrogen. And guess what? At some point, uh, my very good friend and promoter of Jackson decided he wanted to go into hospitality. He called on me and gave me the assignment of hospitality. So we built uh, a hotel and we had a vision of building hotels in rural India, because we believed even 14 years ago that India is going to prosper and boom. And that tertiary and towns that did not even exist will become secondary and, you know, maybe big towns. And today in those towns, while there is industry, people are driving at least, you know, two hours, three hours, one way per day, because there is no staying facilities in those towns. They go to work and they come back with a loss of great productivity per day. And so we decided that we will take a leap <coughs> in the with Bharat growing and we go into rural India. So we built our first laboratory in Fulton. And we built it not to call it a hotel, really, you know, hotel is a very bad word. We wanted and we recognized that we should have an institution there. What is the difference between hotel and institution? A hotel, I look at a very 
a tall building you know that takes 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 from mother earth and uh, from all resources and throws out waste for us we wanted to be an institution in fact we recognized that we would be like the taj mahal of mumbai in fulton we are looked on today even after 12 years as the best business in that entire area we not only have the best hotels best services best laundry best kitchen everything however what makes us an institution is going one step further we decided that we were going to uh, engage with the three villages around us we recognized that we are in the rain shadow of maharashtra water was scarce we recognized that the electricity unit in our area 14 years ago was 16 rupees you know this might scare some people but that's true so we had to design a place and plus uh, sorry one more thing that we didn't have people to recruit in those areas we had to train and nurture them before they became recruits and they became great hoteliers so we did exactly that what we did was jackson being a solar company we put the first rooftop solar array in our entire district what did that do oh one more thing before we also did not look at green as a as a option because we were under the impression that if we went green that it would cost us 17% more 14 years ago this is you know in capital investment and so it was not even a a thing everything we want to do was business related okay so then something great happened while i was in this black and white and you know a black and red type of uh, you know business dr prem jain entered my life dr prem jain is the father of green he was he was the uh, at least my mentor in igbc he was the second president of igbc or chairman of igbc he was the uh, initiator of the ishre movement so many great things he came into my life and after his first hug guess what he introduced the color green into my life and so we signed up with dr jain to receive a gold rating in fulton and we started adding slowly things that would create jackson inns into a gold rated facility lo and behold we realized that if we had to do everything dr jain said we would beat the 16 rupee Uh, electricity bill we would beat this thing called a uh, rain uh, rain shadow we would beat a lot of things that we had no idea how to handle because they were going to become operational nightmares for us so we actually did what he preached at the end of our project we turned out in those days we spent only 5% more in our building and not only achieve gold but we surpassed gold and went into platinum we became by i mean at our own surprise we became a platinum rated hotel instead of a gold india's first in its class we were very proud but at the same time our supply chain changed we used right from fly ash bricks and used everything that goes into a hotel within the 400 kilometers that they assign but not only that our villagers became much more richer 
because Jackson came there. Even the chickens in Fulton started laying more eggs. Okay, our supply chain changed completely, right? And we made sure that was as organic as possible in those days. And then we decided to do our own. And I'll take you through that in a minute. As far as, you know, the electricity bill that I paid in the first couple of years was around 9 lakhs per month. It was a very heavy bill for me. I'm going to uh, fast forward. Today, I pay close to 2 lakhs. How did I do that? It's because the terrace solar array gave us a return on investment much faster than we had ever believed. And we then went from, uh, we are, by the way, a 510 plug-in plug load. We went from 74 kilowatts on top to 450 kilowatts on the six acres that we have. Not only that, we created a farm under the solar panels, which I'll show you later. We started rainwater harvesting and harvested every drop that fell on the six acres. Our 10,000 liter tanker used to cost us 1,350 rupees each. We needed 35 of those, you know, in a, in a, uh, sorry, I, we need much more than 35 of those in a month, much more. And guess what? It was a big OPEX cost burden for us. In two years, we realized that thanks to our rainwater harvesting, right, the water table had sort of, you know, come up. Our well suddenly started, you know, staying alive for almost uh, the whole year. Our neighbor's well started, uh, you know, becoming uh, a bigger resource for us. Guess what? Within 12 years today, I'm very proud to tell you that unless April is a very bad month, even in May, I don't have to have any water tankers anymore. And we are a hundred percent recycler of water. Himanshuji, will you go to the next slide, please? These are all the things that we are doing, and I won't go into detail, you can read them. Whereby we are not only looking at the platinum rating, we are looking at net zero now. We want to be India's first net zero hotel. And guess what? We look at fantastic things that we've already done that are reaping us great benefits. As far as energy goes, we are already 85% there and we will get to 100%. As far as water goes, we are 100% there. And as far as waste goes, uh, unless you talk about lithium batteries and a few other couple of things, we are already 100%. So I am very, very excited about IGBC coming and doing an audit on me for net zero. What else has happened there? So Dr. Prem Jain preached the green and then we started a green journey. What a wonderful one it was. I can tell you that the green journey helped us adopt a school of uh, 500 children, 85% girls, 15% males. And today we give them a energy sensitization, I'm sorry, green sensitization uh, uh, education. We actually interact in that uh, school. We give them lectures, and we have found out that the last three graduate graduate uh, uh, 
uh, what do you call it, years, we have received at least four to five employees from that school. 90% of our employees are already converted farmers. Not that that's good, but that's good for us. They've come into the hospitality industry and every two years, we actually solicit them to leave us and go to Pune, Bombay, you know, so we want to become a school more than, you know, keep them bound to us. We have a program where all our chemicals used are organic. In fact, the pollution board, when they came to our resort, they realized that our laundry was using organic, but they still forced us to put a affluent treatment plant, which was mandatory, I guess, but we did. And we are very happy about that. The other thing was, we have built this resort, I'm sorry, hotel, not for a customer. We have a, a mission 14 years ago where employee comes first. We realized that if the employee was happy, the customer would be happy. We actually have designed the hotel around the employee. None of our housekeepers have to push carts. None of them will have to wear belts to you know, uh, protect their spinal cords. None of them because you know, have any fatigue at the end of it. Okay, our kitchen has, is designed to be at a, at a lovely temperature. And uh, I'm so proud of that and our laundry too, because other hotels that I know that I've worked in, I've worked in, you know, it was a big battle to even get a fan. We play chess, we play carom, we do rangoli, we do so many things, believe me, haldi kuku, we do so many things that we believe are green. Let me tell you, there's another thing that we do that is unique to our hotel. We offer an option between a Turkish towel and a pancha. I don't know if you know what a pancha is, but it's something at least my parents use, my grandparents definitely use. It's a very thin cloth that is highly absorbent, very Indian. And guess what? Uses 50% less laundry resources, you know, and our guests, once explained, are very happy to use it. I challenge our resort world to go towards panchas. You know, forget these Turkish towels. So, to go back to our, our journey, we also uh, decided that it was necessary to beat a couple of other uh, OPEX burdens. One was LPG. I mean, today, the LPG cylinder, at least in Fulton, cost me 1,800 rupees or more. And that's a lot of money for a cylinder today. And so it became very, very uh, easy for us to put biogas uh, plants, and we have reduced that cost. We have vermiculture. Okay, we don't sell it to the guests, which I think uh, Mrs. Sinha just gave me an idea. I will, I will try that. But we give a lot of our vermiculture uh, produce to our farmers as a gesture of goodwill. Yes, so one more thing that we want to do, and I want to add maybe a column, maybe in, uh, in the, especially in the resort and hotel, uh, rating for IGPC someday is net zero vegetables. There is no reason why we can't use hydroponics, why we can't use our land to grow vegetables. You know, vegetables are such a necessity for our, our, uh, our trade and we buy them from outside. There's no reason why we cannot plant them ourselves, especially in resorts where we have so much land. And I remember going to places like, uh, like uh, Orange County, what great, and you know, CGH hotels, 
I mean, all of these are exemplary models of uh, organic and self-sustaining food. Uh, Himanshu, can you go to the next slide, please? Yeah, sorry. So uh, Jacksonins uh, has become an institution in Fulton. Uh, we are the best hotel in the entire district there. Uh, a little bit about our journey again was thanks to Dr. Prem Jain, thanks to my partner Samir uh, Gupta, who is the promoter of Jackson uh, Limited. And we went through this. I'm again reiterating that in 12 years ago, it cost us only 5% more to build uh, the hotel. Today, I think it's almost equal whether you build a normal building or a green building. Um, so we achieve a uh, platinum rating, we will go into net zero, and then we will take on whatever else we need to do also. People retention, this is an important point. We have realized that most of our uh, employees or other family members have stayed with us for more than four years. And that is a lot in our industry. In fact, there are a lot of times we ask them to leave and give them a job somewhere else. Uh, I have my core team who's been with us right from day one, first break. And this is, I, I, I telling you, this is because of an environment, you know, where you breathe better, you feel better, your productivity goes up, you are not, you know, put into heat or cold or, you know, all these different things, no carbon monoxide. You know, I think a good green building really, really helps you retain your employees. I mean, there's an entire case study in Infosys. Uh, uh, Gurmeet Singh talks about this all the time in his presentation. By the way, Gurmeet Singh is our national uh, chairman for IGBC. And I'm telling you, he's right. My retention, I completely uh, uh, say it's thanks to all the green, all the grass, all the trees, all the fruits, all the birds, and the inside envelope where there is no carbon monoxide. You know, we have done many, we put in many systems to make it a truly a green hotel. And attraction, what is the employee attraction? Today, we attract people from the villages. If a Jackson Inn's employee today goes, you know, into Fulton, and people ask, hey, tu kuthe kaam karto hai re? you know, where are you working? And they say Jackson Inns, you can see a marked respect, you know, that, yeah, you know, you, you're working in a great place. And I think that's only because we think green, we work green, and we believe in our family, which is, and that makes us the institution. So without any technical, you know, uh, talk, and if you want a technical part of it, I can send you all the details. But I'm so happy to have shared this, uh, this uh, stage with a person who's a dear friend, Sandeep Sinha. You know, when I, when I saw his resort and I said, chapeau, you know, really, really well deserved. Mahindra's, you know, Mr. Anand Mahindra has been a great inspiration for us for so many things. And uh, again, all stalwarts on this panel. And the last the last picture, if I may show you, uh, oh, this, can you see this picture? We have created these stilts for our solar panels. And we are planting about two acres worth of organic gardens under the solar panels very successfully. Okay, all, all our onions, all our tomatoes, our brinjols, our cucumbers, our coriander, you know, all that comes from these beautiful, beautiful plants. And I think if my 
250 strong family has to say one thing at the end of their lives, it is that we have made a difference to Mother Earth. I thank you for listening to me. I pray that you someday come and visit Fulton. There is so much more you need to touch and feel and see. Thank you so much. Lots of love to all of you. Namaskar. Yeah, thank you, sir. Um, in fact, uh, this was not like a presentation. It is actually like a storyline uh, touched about uh, various emotions and also uh, ending uh, the the green path. I think uh, green path is now to be taken it forward. Thank you so much for your inspiring presentation, sir. And uh, now, uh, now we'll uh, start. Uh, before we go ahead, I mean, there's a lot of Q and A for all the panelists. Uh, I would like to uh, mention because there are also some questions which are mentioning about uh, uh, many stakeholders wanted to be part of the green building movement. Now, I would like to mention to all the participants, um, all the organizations and also the individual members can also be part of uh, IGBC through the IGBC membership program. There are many benefits in terms of uh, you know networking, in terms of paying, paying and playing an active role in the advocacy of the green buildings. Uh, there are 28 chapters across India where uh, you can also participate in the chapter level activities. And in case if you have any projects, um, uh, you, there are a lot of discounts which comes from the certification fee. And in case some kind of programs which are paid programs, you get a discounted entry. A lot of information is also being provided. So uh, uh, we uh, we urge all the participants who uh, wanted to be part of the Grimmeling movement to join IGBC. Um, uh, you can uh, log into our website, igbc.in. And there you can become a member. Um, yeah. Now, uh, now let us. Uh, uh, I mean, there are uh, many interesting questions uh, for all the panelists. Uh, to start with, uh, to Mr. Sinha, um, there is one question which was uh, specifically asking to you, sir. Uh, Mr. Mr. Sinha, is, I think some yeah. Sandeep, Mr. Sinha, I think is left. Uh, that okay. I think he might be trying to. Uh, okay, okay, no, 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 okay, not a problem. I could see his name. Okay, fine. Um, uh, sir, uh, uh, Sandeep, sir, you, uh, there is one, uh, um, there is a question from Mr. Ram Chavan asking, How do you treat the west, uh, wet waste in the premises and uh, particularly the food waste? Okay, so I'll tell you what, at least this is my thinking, if you, and I might be completely wrong. But we have two businesses on the six acres. One is our hotel, which is the platinum rated, and we have a mega kitchen from which we serve about 4,000 people meals a day. Okay, so that's, uh, so between the kitchen waste, you know, all the chilkas of onions and all, to what comes, uh, that is left on the, uh, what do you call it, on the plates of people, and the in, in the buffet, we collect all that and we used to and still do put it in the vermiculture. Okay, and we had big enough pits and all that. But what happens with vermiculture, while it's a great way of uh, uh, recycling wet waste, uh, it all the methane and ethane that is produced goes into the air. So we thought that as a process, let us capture this methane and ethane and use it to light our burners. You know, why let it go and affect the ozone layer? So we now have invested in biogas plants. Okay. So there are three types of flames that are used in a hotel. One is a very high flame, which is we use for Chinese and all. One is a medium flame, which is we use to make uh, food a la minute, which is, you know, on the spot. If you notice that just when the when, when a guest uh, orders a butter chicken, you know, they put the chicken, they put the curry and they do this and, you know, the flame is very high. So that's the second flame. And the third flame is a very uh, low flame we use normally to make our, our rice, you know, our curries which is a slow flame. So 
depending on what, how much biogas you produce and how, how much you pressurize it, you can at least affect the low flame, which is about at least 50% of your, uh, you know, LPG consumption. So I think the easiest way to take all your wet waste, okay, right at the source and put it into a recyclable uh, module somehow or the other. I'm sorry for, I'm not, I hope I've answered that question correctly. Yeah, so thank you so much. Uh, we'll go to the next question. Uh, this is for uh, uh, Mr. Burhanuddin. Um, uh, there was an application mentioning about uh, uh, it's a powerful presentation with a lot of insights uh, towards ESG and net zero from uh, Mr. Krishnara Kulkarni. And uh, there's a question to Mr. Burhanuddin mentioning about um, what is uh, the measures to take uh, uh, to have uh, indoor air quality uh, to be handled at green resorts and hotels. So how it can be happened is the question from Mr. Anil Chopra. Yeah, one is of course, uh, you have to maintain your air conditioning systems uh, frequently. You, you should have that, you have got proper quality of filters installed and there should be always a good quality of fresh air intake into your rooms that should be uh, provided. And uh, as far as possible, you know, try avoid or minimize usage of air conditioning systems and use natural air, you know, that, that will be more beneficial. And that is what we do in our resorts because our receptions mostly or lobbies will not have air conditioning. So also uh, the room air conditioners in the resorts will be generally uh, operated at 24 or 25 degrees centigrade. And we, we have got fans in all our resorts. So we have given balconies, we have windows. So it becomes easier for us, you know, for people to enjoy a lot of fresh air. And uh, this is what we do. Yes, practically it gets difficult in city-based hotels, which is like a matchbox hotels, where monitoring is very, very important. You know, you, there are a lot of uh, gadgets which can be used to monitor your air qualities and ensure that you have got proper dilution uh, of fresh air intake is happening and dilution is taking pay, take place. Uh, so that you can maintain that and of course you do certain audits, cleanliness, maintenance is also part of the routine which should be done uh, properly so that you know all these things are taken care of. Yeah, thank you sir and um, the question to uh, uh, to Mr. Sinha, there are two questions. Uh, one question, uh, they were mentioning about green buffet um and is uh, can you little elaborate uh, if a green buffet is going to help uh, anyone um, in the green resort uh, program also there is a question for uh, uh, asking about are there any four star or five star hotels being certified uh, for green your views uh, please mrs sinha mrs sure. sinha is not there uh, is he no he just so, joined Sandeep. oh he does okay so, Sandeep, I'm not sure what you mean by green buffet. Uh, are they talking about food? Uh, if that is the question, then uh, yes, uh, at the resort, we are using a lot of our organically grown uh, vegetables and grains. And those are when, our, when we cook with that, we clearly display it on the, uh, on the menu that it, this is organically grown palak or organically grown cauliflower or organically grown uh, rice. Uh, and that is that is something that we do encourage and we get a lot of good, great feedback from that. Uh, the second question, is there a trend for four or five star hotels to get green certified? Uh, I think there is. Uh, there is. There are multiple standards. We have built uh, an IHG hotel, a ground plaza hotel, and they have all been certified uh, historically, but not everybody follows IGBC or uh, Indian standards. So, some of the multinationals follow globe, green globe standards and those keep changing. But in the last few years, there's been a great awareness uh, for uh, local Indian indigenous rating systems and which is what is gaining acceptance uh, with uh, the people also. And so I think that is the trend that is now being seen. But it's a matter of uh, creating demand, which is why I feel that the, the focus should be on engagement with the guest engagement with the employees, like Sandeep was saying, uh, so that the story can be taken forward. That's where I feel the focus should be. 
Thank you so much, sir. We'll take the last question uh, uh, to uh, Pravin, uh, uh, Pravin Kumar Soma. There is a question uh, where they're asking about how does, uh, what compensation that people can follow for an existing hotel, for a new hotel, and how uh, resort uh, complaints are different. Uh, green resource is completely different from a hotel project. Uh, hotel projects, uh, new new hotels, for example, they can be raised under IGBC new building duty program. Whereas when a hotel is existing and they want to show the green compliance, uh, they can raise under IGBC existing building duty program. Because the hotel is like a, any other build, building, but of course there will be high percentage on the services side. Uh, whereas resorts is completely different uh, ball game, as I told you. Uh, in the initially also there are three different concepts that the uh, resorts work. So on the guest experience and the guest comfort, uh, all around the people centric. Whereas hotels is like a typical green building uh, project. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Pravin. Uh, now uh, we will end the Q and A session. Uh, I invite Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Craig Shaker, uh, who is the co-chairman for uh, IGBC Goa chapter, for the uh, delivering the concluding remarks. Thank you, Sudeep. We had a fantastic uh, session. I mean, I didn't know how the time uh, passed. We heard uh, these change leaders, wonderful uh, presentations given by them. Uh, initially, Bharat gave a beautiful welcome and he set a wonderful tone by saying how it makes economic sense to go for green buildings and green projects. So that was a very nice uh, way to start off. And then uh, Mahesh took over and gave a very good uh, point of view as a regulator, which is very unusual from, for our uh, kind of, you know, when we have webinars. So it was nice to hear uh, Mahesh with his positive, um, views about the green buildings from the perspective of a regulator. So that was very interesting. And what I liked about uh, his thing is he said, instead of focusing on FSI and FAR, he said, focus on the best uh, resorts and uh, uh, hotels that you can make with a unique uniqueness in the green aspects. So that was a very nice point that I could pick up from him. And another thing is also uh, mentioned about focus on local and environmental issues, you know, settings for the resorts and hotels. I think very nice uh, thing. And he also uh, suggested how best we can use the waste water generated on the site, which is a very good uh, point from him. And of course, then came our uh, dynamic Samir who gave a beautiful presentation about his own project. I mean, he's a developer, from a developer perspective. And what is interesting is this huge project of 900 acres plus, which is now almost 20 years on. So giving a presentation of a project that is of past 20 years and with the photographs and he dwelled into all the every aspect from rainwater harvesting to local flora and fauna to uh, local water i mean you know he built uh, man made uh, water body from where they uh, use the water for the entire project and uh, organic gardens to green education i mean it was fantastic presentation enjoyed the presentation that was uh, Samir. Then, of course, our own Praveen from IGBC gave good perspective and uh, details about the green resort ratings and certification and how the whole process is set about the uh, resorts and hotels. So that was another very nice thing. And our Sayed gave a very, uh, from Mahindra Hotels, with his vast experience in the hotel industry, he gave a very, very good technical presentation. Superb. I mean, it was really a uh, power-packed presentation. I enjoyed the presentation. Very nice. Uh, I don't want to go into details. I'm sure you've gone through the things. But beautiful presentation. 
and then our great Sandeep, our own colleague, gave a passionate story about his uh, Jackson Inn Hotel, a 14-year journey. So beautifully, he explained. Uh, you know, I really got carried away. As he was talking, I could actually imagine his hotel. I've never been there. I could imagine his place, how uh, passionately he's gone into the things. I mean, it was fantastic. Very, very nice presentation. Uh, enjoyed it. And of course, thanks to our IGBC team, you've done a wonderful, uh, uh, what do you say, organizing this particular webinar. Thank you very much, dear Sudeep, Samir, and Himanshu. Fantastic. I hope we can do more, uh, uh, what do you say, webinars like these. This was a very good webinar after a long time. I mean, I don't know how two hours passed. Fantastic. Thank you, Bharat, for the initiative. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you, guys. Over to you, Sudip. Thank you so much, sir. Um, I, I uh, thank uh, all the speakers for today for uh, giving their excellent uh, perspective and inspiring uh, not just individuals, I would say the organizations and their uh, uh, projects to take the green path. And um, I also thank all the participants for the patient listening. We have more than 200 participants who are there uh, for the patient listening. Yes. And um, I, uh, of course, we have exceeded uh, 15 to 20 minutes, but uh, nevertheless, these presentations were so interesting. And, um, and we thank the Goa chapter and also the uh, uh, hospitals and uh, resource association uh, for this program. Thank you so much. And with this, we'll uh, uh, close the session for day today. And uh, for any uh, for any information on any queries, you can uh, uh, log into igbc.in and there's a query box where you can give us a query at any point of time. Thank you so much. Have a great evening. Thanks, Sandeep. Thank, thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, guys. Thank you, Sandeep. Thank you, Bye-bye.